Hey guys, for second year, and this time I want to bring you a video about SweetFX, GemFX, and Reshade. Those three tools are, I think at least to my knowledge, from the same author, and what they do is they are basically post-processing tools. So they alter how the game looks, for example, like this, you know? So that's kind of what these tools do in a nutshell, and I want to explain a little bit more about those because people asked in the last video, so I guess um, I make a follow-up video talk about this, these things. So what they can do is they can alter the filters that get applied to the game. They basically apply new filters. They don't alter the ones that already get applied. So if you, for example, want to have a less blue in your uh, in your game, basically, you, you find all right, like, I think the blue shown in this game is way too blue, you can alter that. But it goes even further than that because you can improve different things. For example, if you think the game doesn't look as sharp as it should, you can increase sharpness. If you do think that these colors do, way, uh, do look way too realistic, you can actually apply true colors, for example, and they look way less realistic. And you can also go for realistic shaders and it will alter the game look as well. And this is just a few of those options that you have here. For example, if I'm like, all right, lens flare and god rays, I do really like that. And I look into the sun, you know, after I save the settings, whoops, I need to turn this on, save settings, there we go. And you can see right here, we have lens flares right now. If I don't like them, I can turn them off. And this is the other thing about this tool, which is extremely great. You can do this on the fly. Like you don't have to close the game. You don't have to restart the application, do different config editing, stuff like that. You just open this program and you can do everything you want on the fly. And that's really, really amazing. So I really recommend this tool. And the other thing you do want to know about is presets. In Rome Total War 2, this was the most, um, the most popular thing, different presets. And what you can do is you can just go ahead and say, all right, I do want other presets and you can use those. And this is a way to easily get a desired look. You can look up presets on the internet. Let's actually see this here in action. Sorry for that. Um, you can look those up in the internet and they basically will show you different screenshots. Some will also get you with brightness, like set up with brightness and gamma settings, which I find extremely important, but not all of the authors do that. And I really, really dislike that because you can make slight gamma adjustments, like just increasing it by 10, and it looks completely differently. So I really recommend, if you're an author of a preset, do you get those values in there. Um, but again, you can find different presets on the internet. They will have different effects, and you can just choose the one you like. You can, get, you can insert a preset, and then you're good to go. If you're having trouble with this mod, um, or do not know how to use presets, you can watch my other video I have on the channel. Um, we'll explain everything to you because there are a few problems and there's one problem I want to talk about in particular because it affects Cold War Warhammer um, in a different way than Rome 2 because in Rome 2 it seems to work flawlessly and Warhammer it doesn't and the problem for that is actually um, the bypass UI thing. What it does normally is, as you can see right here, um, I think the best thing to see is right here the effects also get applied on the menu and this will be more apparent once we switch to the main menu which we'll do in a moment after you get a little bit more time with the shader here in action and you can no normally bypass that so it only gets applied to the battle map to the battle itself um, so this is really important but it doesn't really work in Walmart right now but the author already chose um, in the forum that he's working on the mod and this, this will probably get fixed in the next couple of weeks. And for my last we will switch out here. Well, let's try to do the, the dancing. And now I've cubed. Alright, so let's put the replay here. Um, and let's go into the menu and just to make my point. You can see this already. It looks way different. And you can toggle this on and off and you can see that it also gets a little bit blurry so yeah this is kind of the thing you have to live with if you do want to use the presets and the tool right now for Warhammer but I still think it's really worth it and I highly recommend it because it really makes those battles look much 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 more better so yeah that's it I think for me here if you do have any questions any feedback anything like that just leave this in the comments below I may make another video but I don't really think it's needed 
We'll see though um, when in a few months from now there are some presets and I'm still playing this game. I will be making a video, maybe a comparison video, stuff like that um, for you guys. If you do have your favorite um, GemFX or Reshade or SweetFX preset, feel free to share it in the comments below. Um, I will be trying it out for sure, I think, because I'm really looking for a good one. The problem with a lot of Rome 2 presets that you might want to use is that they do not really do the dark areas of the map justice, you know. The dark areas of the map um, get really dark if you use some preset and this can really make it hard to um, fight a proper battle because it will just be too dark to see what's going on there. So yeah, that's the problem with that, but again, as time goes on there will be more presets. Thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, leave a thumbs up, leave, leave a subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.